Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, Selenium 2 and where we are and, and, and what we've been doing. Um, I'm not as organized as everyone else, uh, so I don't have slides. I can make things up though and I can wave my hands. Um, and the way that I'd quite like to do it is just to find out what you guys are interested in knowing and then I'll try and answer those questions and I'll give you a bit of information before we start and we'll see how that goes. Sound good? Yeah, good, excellent. So um, about a year ago, it was August 2009 um, at GSEC, Jason and I sort of did the announcement of, hey, we're merging the projects and we're doing all this stuff and um, it's going to be awesome. And, and the video was awful, so you can actually hear us go, it's going to be awesome. Um, but it's going to be awesome. Um, in the meantime, we have done ooh, seven alpha releases. Um, so 2.0, alpha 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, I'm going to be pushing out Alpha 8 sometime this week because uh, people keep on finding bugs. Some unreasonable, I know, in Alpha software. Um, what do we mean by an Alpha release? Like, people are really wary about using Alpha software. Like, oh, can't, can't touch it. Um, the word, Google devalued the word beta completely. So, like, like, we need something that's not beta and totally solid. We need to indicate the fact that it's still flux. Um, so for us, alpha releases are sort of, we haven't yet added all the APIs that we, we think we're go are going to be necessary in order to hit that sort of successful 2.0 release. Um, but the APIs that are there right now, they're pretty solid. They don't change very much. Um, and sort of, we expect them to, to remain fairly constant moving forward. We'll be cutting the first beta before Christmas, um, even if I have to beat my team harder um, to make it happen. Uh, we're missing one set of APIs, and that's handling alerts and prompts. And then once that's there, we're, we're good to go. Um, that's going to be fun. The beta releases will be every single API is implemented in at least one browser. And then the beta process will be us telling people it's done and then going, yeah, but this bit here doesn't work. Has anyone heard of defect-driven development? <laughs> defect-driven defect development is one of these fantastic things where you say to people, I've finished your software, and they, they go, what's the URL? And you go, hmm? <laughs> and so you quickly like put up a website, like, hello world. And you go, your website's done. And they go, I can't buy anything. It's like, oh, you want to buy things? Like, I'll list of products. There you go. It's done. And the, the, the bugs sort of inform where you need to be going and what you're doing. Um, I'm not saying that's what we do, but that's what we do. <laughs> we sort of wait until we, 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 we're fleshing things out. And, and rather than sitting there in an ivory tower, stroking our chins and our magnificent beards, going, well, I think it would be nice if we could do this. We'll find out sort of what people are using and, and where, where we're going. Um, and of course, the sort of usage of the APIs. So um, Selenium 2 coming along. The key things in it that, that are going to be exciting and fun and the reason why you want to upgrade are the extremely pleasant web driver APIs, um, which are sort of object, who, who here uses an, an, an IDE like um, Eclipse or IntelliJ or Visual Studio? Right, you know when you've got the Selenium object and you hit like control space? I'm, I, am I the only one who's glad they've got a 30 inch monitor so, that, so they can read all the options that are there? Hmm? Yeah, I mean ReSharper is the daddy, but it, it still doesn't help that there's 130 different options <laughs> <laughs> of things that you can do. I keep on walking up to people and going, did you know about this sort of API beginning with S? Because I haven't scrolled down that far. Um, so the, the web driver APIs are sort of more condensed, um, compact. There's probably more methods in total, but it sort of leads you through things in, in something that we refer to as object-based um, APIs. They're, they're not quite object-oriented but they're a lot more pleasant and easy to use. Um, so that's coming. Um, no server process necessary. So who here has run their test and then realized halfway through that they finished really fast because they forgot to start the Selenium server? Yeah, I, okay, it's just a problem that the team members have. <laughs> Brilliant, it, we're obviously far more stupid than we make out. Um, and I'm pleased about that, that's good. Um, so if you're using one of the browsers that we support natively, that's Firefox, IE, Chrome, um, you know, Android, whatever, um, you won't need to start that, that external server process and monitor it and make sure it's happy. We, we do these things um, natively. And the other big thing that we're landing is uh, native events. So right now um, in, in Selenium, whenever you do like a click or a type or a type keys or a type keys native or a, whatever it is, 
Um, when you execute all these commands, what we do is we sort of do an awful lot of jiggery pokery in JavaScript and then go and, and fire these sort of synthesized events from the DOM. And, and, and then we go, yes, that's exactly what would happen. And that's exactly not what would happen. Um, has anyone tried to use type keys to set, good, excellent, well done, <laughs> um, to set the value of a form field uh, on a WebKit-based browser? Much hilarity ensues as the content fails to update. Um, I'm surprised more people don't complain about that. I know I do every single time I make that mistake. Um, so things like that are, are hard to do, and that's because the browsers are designed to protect you. Yeah, if, if a malicious script could just update things by firing off random events, they'd, they'd be firing off random events and doing malicious things like uploading your password files or sort of the, the, the pictures you took at the weekend, um, whatever it is. Um, exciting browser exploits, I have no boring photos from other people. Um, yeah, so uh, what we do in, in, in WebDriver with the WebDriver APIs is we're providing native events. We're firing these events at the operating system level. So when we do the send keys, it's actually going in and, and fields update. It's, it's a radical step forward. Um, but it provides far better user emulation. So those are the things. Um, obviously, sort of, we've got this sort of brave new world of lovely APIs and fantastic capabilities, and only the, the, the core team need to worry about not starting a server because the rest of you are far cleverer than we are. Um, how do you get there? Yeah, you've probably got, who's got more than one Selenium test? I'm surprised that not everyone raised their hand. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got more than that. Um, so, sort of, you've, you've made an investment in the existing APIs with your existing infrastructure, and it would be sort of incredibly ludicrous and fantastically arrogant of us to say to you, throw away that investment, rewrite everything. Like, that's not a recipe for your success, it's not a recipe for our success. Um, the way we're doing it is we're allowing a sort of managed migration. So, in the alphas that you can download right now, um, particularly if you're using Java, we're adding it for the other languages as well. Um, Python, Ruby, uh, C Sharp, and, and Java are the, the big four that we're supporting. Um, there's a class called WebDriver Back Selenium. I'll take you through that naming because it's radical. It's an instance of the Selenium interface that's backed by WebDriver. Just do that backwards and, and it'll all work. Um, it's like playing Iron Maiden records, like there's a little hidden message in there somewhere. Um, so what you do is you replace new default Selenium, blah, 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 selenium.start with new WebDriver back Selenium, here's what I want. And it will go off and, and give you an instance of Selenium interfaces. So in theory, in theory, you can just take that, drop it into your test, they all work. You go home going, I've migrated our entire test suite over and, and be happy. Um, don't do that because we focus more on correctness than speed. What you've probably done is you've got your existing tests to run, but they're not going to be as quick as they used to be. Um, but it does mean that you now set yourself up so you can do a managed migration. And the advice that, that I give teams that I work with and, and sort of in the open source and, and internally here at Google is when you come to touch a new class like the page objects um, that, that you were talking about, um, just take that opportunity to switch to the new APIs so you don't have to do this huge lump of work. You can do it in a sort of slow, managed, careful way. Um, and over time, the bits that you use will migrate. The bits that you don't use won't. Um, and that's OK. But you've got a plan then to move forward. All good? I see nods. Excellent. Are there any questions? Are there things you want to know? Have you been tearing your hair out going, I don't understand a word that he's saying? Um, <laughs> yes, apparently. Uh, Jason's at the back. Go on, then. What about mobile? Mobile. Uh, mobile. Mobile. <laughs> so, uh, mobile. Yeah, mobile data. Um, we're, so, the, the, the mobile internet is, is big. Yeah, if I, four years ago, if I had asked people who had a web capable phone in their pocket that they use day in, day out, um, you know, there'd be almost no one. Right now, I suggest that a majority of the people in the room have an iPhone and Android, uh, maybe a Palm, like some web-enabled telephone. People are increasingly accessing websites over this stuff. We need to actually prove that our websites work. Um, we know this. 
So the WebDriver APIs, um, if you go down to the selenium.googlecode.com website now and go to the downloads, you can download an Android application which you can install, which will be an instance of the remote web driver. So you can start testing using the WebDriver APIs on mobile devices. There's an iPhone driver that works with the iPad. We haven't released it. We probably won't put it through the store because it sort of updates really frequently and apparently getting updates through Apple is a relaxing process um, with plenty of time for contemplation. Um, so, uh, but, but it's there in the project. So if, you, if you're doing iPhone development, um, it's available in our, in our source tree and I can put up documentation on how to do it. So far, um, the iPhone and Android are the sort of big two platforms that, that we've been focusing on. Um, if anyone's interested in more and actually has people running into their site using those other browsers, feel free to get in touch and I'm happy to answer questions. Um, probably Selenium-Developers Google Group is the place to go.